Welcome back to my series uh, on praying the liturgy of the hours. Um, we are now going to be dealing with weekends, that's Saturday and Sunday, and um, solemnities that may co uh, come up. Now, one of the things we had noticed um, previously uh, in evening prayer was that we did have our prayers Monday through Saturday, I'm sorry, through Friday, and we had Saturday daytime prayer, as you can see in our Psalter here, we have Saturday, the daytime prayer, mid-morning, and it flows through, there's the next page, midday, mid-afternoon, and then it ends, and we move on to Sunday. Well, plainly, there's a Saturday missing here, and the same thing is repeated if we go to night prayer, that's my yellow tab here. Here's my Friday, and when I switch over, Friday my night prayer, night prayer, conclusion, Friday. There is no Saturday. There is no Saturday. It ends. The reason is that the ancient Jews uh, considered the end of the day at... Um, at sunset. So anything that was um, done after sunset was technically, um, you know, for liturgical purposes, um, would be uh, the next, the next day. You can see this um, with church, for example. Um, everybody knows by now, hopefully, that Saturday 5 p.m. Mass counts as your Sunday obligation. Um, now Sunday, every Sunday, is considered a solemnity by the church. Um, so that is also handled differently. Um, some of the solemnities uh, that we'll be dealing with um, throughout the year also. There's one in our calendar right here, for example. Um, since we are dealing again with our you know, arbitrary date of August 12th uh, and the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are going to come across the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, that is a solemnity, and we do have... Um, uh, a prayer, you know, um, a, se a section in the back of the book that we're going to cover on that. So now to get back to business. Uh, so what do you do on Saturday evening? You've done your Saturday midday prayer, or if you're only doing the morning and evening prayers, you've done your morning. So Saturday, we have to refer to the Psalter. As you probably saw already, we're dealing with after Saturday daytime prayer. And again, bear it in mind. This, you know, um, Saturday evening is considered Sunday. And that is why in the beginning of the Psalter, the very beginning for the next week, week four, it doesn't begin with Sunday uh, morning prayer or um, in the Invitatory and the Office of Readings. It starts with evening prayer one. And that is because this is done on Saturday evening. So Saturday evening, you run through this as you normally would with your um, with your, uh, your evening prayer prayer. Uh, format that you're familiar with. The opening, the hymn, the psalm, a couple of psalms, uh, readings, responsories, uh, the prayer, and your conclusion. And then, Sunday morning, you then start from your invitatory and you work through. And, again, you're working through the whole, the whole day of Sunday. There's your morning prayer. There's your daytime prayer. And we have evening prayer too, because this is obviously Sunday evening, the actual Sunday evening. So they've just named that as evening prayer two. Evening prayer one is actually Saturday evening's prayer, which is part of the liturgical day of Sunday. And same thing with the with night prayer, actually. If we head over to the night prayer section, here's your Friday. Here's your Friday. And it ended, as you noticed, if you recall. Now, if we actually go back to Sunday of the night prayer. Here's night prayer. Once again, we do have after evening prayer one. Remember, after evening prayer one. Evening prayer one was Saturday night's prayer. So this is the night prayer that continues. Even though it says on Sundays, again, Saturday evening is considered Sunday. So this is where you perform your night prayer for Saturday night and solemnities, because solemnities are treated the same way. 
the night before, the evening before, rather, is the actual beginning of your solemnity, which is why you should be looking at your red tag um, to see what, uh, you know, what celebrations are coming up. So now, once you're done with, you know, with this night prayer for Saturday, this one also switches over immediately to after evening prayer two on Sundays and Solemnities. And this would be the actual, what we would consider the calendar day. So on Sunday night, this is what we would be doing. And also on the night of the Solemnity itself, not the previous night. That again would be evening prayer one. So that pretty much covers the, the weekend section of it. Now, again, as you noticed, you know, this is the same, a similar format uh, that works with the uh, solemnities. Now we're going to flip over to the red area. That's where, remember, we have these calendar dates. Also check that little red uh, supplement on a, on a daily basis. You want to see what's going to happen before you. Now, for example, since we're doing August 12th, um, this is what's happening on the 13th uh, in our little fictitious tomorrow. Now, this this one I'm a little um, a little uh, confused by because if you'll notice in previous days, they specifically tell you, uh, for example, this one's a memorial. Uh, I think there's another one back here. Here's another memorial. This one. This one's a feast. But this one is not meant is not labeled. And if we go forward to the here, the fifteenth, this is flagged as a solemnity for the assumption. So I don't exactly know what how you're supposed to treat these. Um, but these are martyrs, so I, can, I imagine they would be solemnities. Um, but in any case, it's the same structure as we use in the ordinary, um, and what we've just discussed for the uh, the night prayer uh, and the evening prayer. Now, in this case, if I was going to follow through with this um, as a uh, as a solemnity, it specifically gives you a little bit of information about who is being uh, memorialized here, um, and then it also tells you where to where you can run your uh, uh, what is essentially the ordinary for these kinds of prayers. In this case, I can choose from either the common of several martyrs or of pastors. You choose one or the other. So we're just going to pick and go take a look at sixteen ninety four. Now, 1694. Uh, 1694. Now, 1694, they're specifying is to start with your inventory here. Again, referring back to the ordinary. But this is your antiphon. There's your inventory, inventory psalm, the Psalm 95, or the uh, alternates, um, if you're going to mix them up. Office of Readings, again, there's a hymn for that. Goes through the psalmody. And it continues through. There's more of your psalmody. Uh, there's a reading. Now, here's an interesting bit. Uh, in your Office of Readings, you do have the first readings, responsory, and a second reading. But if we went back to the red flag here, you'll notice in the Office of Readings for this memorial here, they, spe they, they specify a different second reading. They happen to be uh, by the same uh, St. Cyprian. But you would substitute the second reading in the common of several martyrs. You substitute this second reading with this second reading. They are slightly different. And again, you, you, you refer back to it and you'll notice there's a different responsory in the uh, in the common uh, over here for uh, these two martyrs. And there's a separate prayer. Because if we go back to the uh, the common of martyrs, uh, we do have a responsory. And then they're saying use the same thing, uh, the same prayer as in the morning prayer. But we have a prayer that's already been assigned here. And then we proceed through without morning, morning, the daytime prayer. You know, all for, the, all for these two um, uh, martyrs. And there's the evening prayer too to end it. Now, if you'll notice, they did specify in the book for the common of martyrs 1694. So that would kind of lead me to believe, since they wanted you to start with the invitatory, the, the beginning of the day, 
that they didn't really uh, want to push the issue about the evening section. Because actually, if we go back to 1694, if you recall, we just started here on 1694. But prior to that, on this Common of Several Martyrs, it does have the option to begin with Evening Prayer 1, which, since again, we are using this as an example, today is our date of August 12th, we would actually start with that Evening Prayer for the Common of Martyrs. We would start that on Saturday evening. And then proceed through as normal, just like the Saturday and the Sundays. Um, and that's really uh, that that one. Now, similar with the Assumption. However, this is flagged as a solemnity. Um, I also believe it is a day of obligation. Um, uh, maybe you should get yourself to church. And this one does immediately tell you, as soon as you see that evening prayer one, that tells you that on August 14th, which would be a Wednesday night or evening, I would have had to start honoring the Assumption. And as we covered in the weekend, it goes through, everything is filled in here for you. The antiphons, uh, now the Psalms and Canticles from the Common of the Blessed Virgin Mary, again on 1622. I think we've seen these before. No, actually we saw the, uh, the, the conclusions. But these are the other items that can be filled in to match with the assumption, which I have to have lost here. November 30th, November 16th. The date's on the top, too. August. August. August, August 15th. So the August 15th, this, this solemnity in particular, again, it's a situation of mixing and matching. You're going to be flipping back and forth. Um... Follow whatever is in the actual page for the solemnity. This will override whatever you find in the Common of the Blessed Virgin, uh, which is in that 16, uh, 22 page. Uh, you come back to this. Here are your antiphons for your psalms. The reading, the responsory, can the Canticle of Mary. Uh, again, that's something that's done every evening without fail. This is the antiphon for it. The intercessions and the prayer. And you follow through. And that was that would be the night before. Um, then on the day of, again, we have all these items here that would complement the ordinary in this case. And um, the basic flow that you're familiar with from the Office of Readings, for example. This would fill in for the first reading, second reading. And it goes through the entire day, including evening prayer two, once again. This is the day of. This is beyond the 15th. And then, as it, as it mentions, at the end of night prayer on this day, it's appropriate to try to sing Ave Maria. Uh, reading prayer. Yeah, so you'd be referring back to uh, to your Friday, which, uh, I'm sorry, Thursday. would be the Thursday evening, I'm sorry, the Thursday night prayer. Which, as you know, is in our little night section here. You'd be just doing a normal Thursday with the information they specified put in there. And that really covers it. Yeah, like I said, it's it, it's, it's pretty much common sense. Uh, you just have to realize you know, and remember that every Sunday is treated as a solemnity. So Saturday evening um, actually marks the beginning of Sunday. Uh, and they do conveniently flag it as evening one. And evening two is for the actual day of. Uh, and similar with the Friday, uh, with the night prayers as well. Um, that pretty much covers it. Um, hopefully I didn't leave you too confused. Um, and that's it. Uh, hopefully you can uh, have a chance to view the other videos and piece this all together. Uh, thank you again for watching and God bless.